is Friday. It's Good Friday. Pastor Kyle here at Union Baptist Church. John chapter 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it upon his head. And they put on him a purple robe. They said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said to them, Behold, I bring him forth to you that you may know I find no fault in him. Then Jesus came forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate said unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. He went again to the judgment hall and said to Jesus, Who are you? But Jesus gave him no answer. And Pilate said unto him, Speak to me. Don't you know that I have the power to crucify you and I have the power to release you? And Jesus said, Thou could have no power at all against me except that it were given from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto you has greater sin. And from their own Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, if, if you let this man go, you're not Caesar's friend. Whosoever makes himself to be a king, he speaks against Caesar. And when Pilate heard that, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that's called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover. And about the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews again, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and they led him away. And he, bearing the cross, went forth to the place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him. And two other with him on either side, one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on a cross. And the writing was Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And this title then read many of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified it was nigh unto the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Greek, and in Latin. And then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews. But that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered him, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts, each to each soldier, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout, and they said, therefore among themselves, let us not tear it, but let's cast, cast lots for it. Whose it shall be, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, which says, they parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture, they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now, there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus, therefore, saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold thy mother, and from that hour the disciple took her unto his home. 
After the Jesus, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. Now there was a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and they put it on his up and put it to his mouth. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And then he bowed his head. And he gave up his ghost. The Roman cross won all of its arguments. It killed all of its opponents. It never made concessions. And the cross of Christ was no exception to this rule. After an excruciating six hours on that blood-stained, rub rugged Roman cross, our Lord bowed his head in death. The cross is such a powerful thing. It's far more than a symbol that we decorate our bumpers with. It's far more than, than an emblem that we, we attach to a chain and wear around our necks. The cross is, is, is one of the three pillars that hold up the New Testament church. His birth, His death, and His resurrection. If just one of those pillars is removed, all of our hope crumbles. Two of these pillars we enjoy talking about, we enjoy thinking about, we enjoy dwelling upon. We, we think about His birth and, and we celebrate it, we sing songs about it, we decorate our homes with lights and His resurrection we love just the same. But His death, but his cross is unpleasant. His, his death, his cross is difficult. His death, his cross, it twists our, our stomachs into knots. It makes us physically sick. His cross, our Savior, his suffering. But we must think about the cross. We must talk about the cross. We must dwell upon the cross because without his cross, there is no crown. Without his death, there is no life. In John chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible said that God did not send his son into this world, that this world might be condemned, but to save this world through him. See, our sin had separated us from God. There's a great gulf, a great chasm that's fixed between man and God. And it's not, it's not anything we can bridge. No amount of effort, no amount of energy, no amount of charity or generosity can bridge the gap between man and God that was made because of our sin, because of our rebellion. But God demonstrated his love for me and, and for you and that while we were yet sinners who could not bridge that gap, he sent his only begotten son to die on a cruel Roman cross for you and for me to atone for our sins, to reconcile us to himself. Today, Good Friday, we think about the price that was paid for our freedom. We talk about the suffering that was endured for reconciliation. We dwell upon the blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Let's pray. Father, today we remember the cross. Today we remember all that Jesus was willing to endure so that we could be free. Help us, God, not to take for granted this gift of love. Forgive us, Lord, for being so busy and so distracted, so apathetic, so consumed by lesser things here on this earth that we put the cross in the back of our minds. Thank you, Father, for the cross. Thank you that it is by your wounds that we are healed. Thank you that it is by your blood that our sins are atoned for. Thank you that though you hung your head in death when you cried, it is finished. 
that you did not say you were finished. Thank you for absorbing the sting of death so that we would never have to. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the cross. In Jesus' name, amen.